what uh, computing hardware or um, just any kind of even software design are you uh, do you find beautiful from your own work from uh, other people's work that you're just uh, we were just talking about the the battleground of flaws and mistakes mm -hmm. and errors but things that were just beautifully done is there something that pops to mind well when things are beautifully done usually there's a well set thought out set of abstraction layers like, so the whole thing works in unison nicely yes and and when I, when i say abstraction layer that means two different components when they work together they work independently they don't have to know what the other one is doing Mm. So that decoupling. Yeah. So the, the famous one was the, the network stack. Like there's a seven layer network stack, yep. you know, data transport and protocol and all the layers. And the innovation was, is when they really wrote, got that right. Because networks before that didn't define those very well. The layers could innovate independently. And occasionally the layer boundary would, would you know, the interface would be upgraded. And that that let, you know, the, the design space breathe. And mm -hmm. people, you could do something new in layer seven without having to worry about how layer four worked. Right. And so good design does that. And you see it in processor designs. When we did um, the Zen design at AMD, we made several components very modular. And, you know, my insistence at the top was I wanted all the interfaces defined before we wrote the RTL for the pieces. One of the verification leads said, if we do this right, I can test the pieces so well independently when we put it together, we won't find all these interaction bugs because the floating point knows how the cache works. And I was a little skeptical, but he was mostly right. That the, the modularity of the design greatly improved the quality. Is that universally true in general? Would you say about good designs, the modularity is uh, like usually Well, we modular. talked about this before. Humans are only so smart, like, like <laughs> and we're not getting any smarter, right? But the complexity of things is going up. Yeah. So, you know, a, a beautiful design can't be bigger than the person doing it. It's just, you know, their piece of it. Like, the odds of you doing a really beautiful design of something that's way too hard for you is low, right? If it's way too simple for you, it's not that interesting. It's like, well, anybody could do that. But when you get the right match of your, your expertise and, you know, mental power to the right design size, that's cool, but that's not big enough to make a meaningful impact in the world. So now you have to have some framework to design the pieces yes. so that the whole thing is big and harmonious, but you know, when you put it together, it's you know sufficiently sufficiently interesting to, to be used. And you know, so that's like a beautiful design is. Matching the limits of that human cognitive capacity to uh, to the module that you can create and then creating a nice interface between those modules and thereby, do you think there's a limit to the kind of beautiful complex systems we can build with this kind of modular design? It's like, uh, you know, if, if we build increasingly more complicated, you can think of like the internet. Okay, let's scale it down. Well, like you can think of like social network, like Twitter mm -hmm. as one computing system. Mm -hmm. And, and but those are little modules, yeah. right? So but it's built on, it's built on so many components nobody at Twitter even understands, right? So That's the, so so if an alien showed up and looked at Twitter, he wouldn't just see Twitter as a beautiful simple thing that everybody uses, which is really big. You would see the network it runs on the fiber optics, the data is transported, the computers, the whole thing is so bloody complicated, nobody at Twitter understands it. And so you think the, that's what the alien would see. So yeah, if an alien showed up and looked at Twitter <laughs> or looked at the various different networked systems that you can see on Earth. So imagine they were really smart and they could comprehend the whole thing. And then they sort of, you know, evaluated a human and thought, this is really interesting. No human on this planet comprehends the system they built. No individual or well, would they even see individual humans? That's an like we humans are very human centric, entity centric. And so we think of us as the organ, as the central organism, and the networks as just the connection of organisms. But from a perspective of an alien, from an outside perspective, yeah. it seems like yeah, we're we're, just we're, one yeah, organism. yeah, I get it. We're the ants, and they'd see the ant colony. The ant colony, yeah. Yeah, yeah, or the result, the production of the ant colony, which is like cities, and yeah. it's it's uh, 
Yeah. In that sense, humans are pretty impressive. The modularity that we're able to, and the and how robust we are to noise and mutation, all that kind of stuff. Well, that's because it's stress tested all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you build all these cities with buildings, and you get yeah. earthquakes occasionally, and wars. You know, some you know wars, earthquakes, viruses every once in a while. <laughs> you know changes in business plans for you know like shipping or something like like as long as it's all stress tested then it, ke it keeps adapting to the the situation so the yeah, it's, it's a curious phenomenon